Hello viewers, this is part 2 of our endoscopy video. In this video, we are going to cover the rest information from video 1. If you didn't watch our video 1, please watch it and keep update yourself. Before getting into the video, I would like to request all the viewers to share and subscribe our YouTube channel to show us your huge support. Thank you. Dear healthcare professionals and my dear viewers, welcome to healthcare engineering channel. I'm R. Surya alias Kritika, a biomedical engineer from healthcare engineering team. I'm so glad that our team have an opportunity to have a presentation like this. And I always like to share the knowledge and experiences what I gain from the industry with you all. And this makes me and our team to create such an amazing and knowledgeable presentations like this. I strongly believe that all kinds of healthcare professionals and students can learn a lot from our channel and blog to update their knowledge by knowing the trendings in modern healthcare world. Therefore, I would like to welcome you all to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the notification instantly once we post our informative video. And also you can visit our blog www.learnbiomedengine.blogspot.com You learn more on the concepts we share in our videos. We can advertise your healthcare products, we can promote your healthcare events, we provide supports to boost up your healthcare business, we can provide technical reviews for your medical devices and many more online supports. If you are interested to get the support from us, please contact us to our email id which will be shown in your screen. Healthcare engineering team also active in these social media platform. If you want to get more updates regarding healthcare, you can follow any one of the platform or all of these. And also if you are healthcare professional who wanted to give information regarding healthcare sector, you can utilize our WhatsApp group to share your thoughts. All the blog links and also the social media platform links are given below in the description box. Today, we are going to see a second part of our endoscope video. So, let's get into the video. Types of endoscopes There are different types of endoscopes available in medical field. First one is arthroscope. Arthroscope The procedure of arthroscope is known as arthroscopy. The arthroscope is specially designed for the area of joints it put in through cuts in the skin. Bronchoscope the procedure of bronchoscope is known as bronchoscopy or flexible bronchoscopy. It is specially designed for the area of trachea, commonly known as windpipe and bronchi. Tubes going to the lungs. It put in through mouth or nose. Colonoscope. The procedure of colonoscope is known as colonoscopy or lower endoscopy. It is specially designed for the area of colon and large intestine, vagina and cervix. It put in through annex. Cystoscope. The procedure of cystoscope is known as cystoscopy or cystourethroscopy. It is specially designed for the area of bladder. It put in through urethra. Enteroscope. The procedure of enteroscope is known as enteroscopy. It is specially designed for the area of small intestine. It put in through mouth or anus. Esophagogastrodiodinoscope. The procedure of esophagogastrodiodinoscope is known as esophagogastrodiodinoscopy. It is commonly called as EGD, upper endoscopy, pandoscopy or gastroscopy. It is specially designed for the area of esophagus, commonly known as swallowing tube. Stomach and duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, it put in through the mouth. Hysteroscope. The procedure of hysteroscope is known as hysteroscopy. It is specially designed for the area of uterus. It put in through the vagina. Laparoscope. The procedure of laparoscope is known as laparoscopy or peritoneal endoscopy. It is specially designed for the area of the abdomen and pelvis. It put in through small incision in the abdomen. Laryngoscope. The process of laryngoscope is known as laryngoscopy. It is specially designed for the area of larynx, popularly known as voice box. It put in through the mouth or nose. Media stenoscope. The process of media stenoscope is known as media stenoscopy. It is specially designed for the area of the mediastinum, space between the lungs. 
it put through the incision above the breast bone that is sternum sigmoidoscope the process of sigmoidoscope is known as sigmoidoscopy or flexible sigmoidoscopy or procto sigmoidoscopy it is specially designed for the area of rectum and sigmoid colon that is the lower part of the large intestine and it put through the anus thoracoscope the process of thoracoscope is known as thoracoscopy or pleuroscopy it is specially designed for the area of the space between the lungs and chest wall it put through the incision into the chest cavity this is the basic idea about the types of endoscope and their usages this is the illustration that taken during gastroscopy it starts from upper esophagus and ends in distal duodenum sterilization procedure endoscopes are routinely exposed to mucus and other gastrointestinal secretions like blood saliva feces bile and sometimes pus autoclaving is an economic and excellent method of sterilizing the instrument that do not heat sensitive if the instrument or autoclave using hot sterilization method the heat sensitive instrument that is flexible utroscope chip on tip endoscopes get damaged manual cleaning includes brushing with single use wire brushes and expose of all external and accessible internal components to a low foaming enzymatic detergent chemical cleaning includes glutaraldehyde hydrogen peroxide para acetic with hydrogen peroxide are used a new method of sterilization by moist heat has been used in laboratory it involves immersing the contaminated instrument in a water bath at 85 degrees celsius for an hour this becomes possible for heat resistant it reported that it kill most of the pathogenic organism including mycobacterium tuberculosis e coli proteus bulgaris and pseudomonas pyosaninin advances in endoscopes advances in digital imaging provide the viewer with a more engaging immersive experience in digital imaging endoscopists are becoming increasingly able to detect subtle minute mucosal changes that were previously indistinguishable from normal tissue advances in television the endoscope has switched from standard definition to digital high definition white light imaging This results in image enhancement. The endoscopy has been to play an ever increasing role in the detection and treatment of gastrointestinal cancer, esophageal cancer and other GI conditions. Ability to treat not only the mucosal disease but also the submucosal disease. Narrow band imaging NBI introduced in endoscopy for early detection of lesions this shows microvascular pattern which allows better characterization of lesions the use of HD endoscopes and monitor allow substantial image improvements by producing fewer artifacts on rapid movement and when combined with corresponding processor may reach an image quality of over 2 million pixel This is about the advances in endoscopes. Capsule endoscopy. Capsule endoscopy is a procedure that uses a tiny wireless camera to take pictures of your digestive tract. A capsule endoscopy camera sits inside a vitamin sized capsule used swallow. As the capsule travels through your digestive tract, the camera takes thousands of pictures that are transmitted to a recorder you wear a belt around your waist. It also helps to view the area that isn't easily reached. It is mostly done when the cause of gastrointestinal bleeding, cancer diagnosis and polyp screening etc. This is the illustration of how an capsule endoscopy works inside the stomach. This is just a basic idea of what an capsule endoscopy is does. Risk and side effects of endoscopy. These risk and side effects of endoscopy may or may not occur during an examination. First thing is reaction to sedation prior to your upper endoscopy. Some sedation has to be given after the procedure. Sometimes it causes the adverse risk of an serious reaction. Sometimes tearing of the gastrointestinal tract may occur. Mostly endoscopies consist of an examination and biopsy and so the risk of infection is low when the risk of infection increase when additional procedure are performed 
If the biopsy has been done, then the risk of bleeding complication may occur. In rare cases, such bleeding may occur a blood transfusion. Signs and symptoms after endoscopy. It may occur or may not. They are vomiting, fever, chest pain, difficulty in swallowing, shortness of breath, persistent abdominal pain, bloating and gas, cramping and sore throat. Next one is abnormalities detected during endoscopy. Mucosal abnormalities are detected such as erythemia, ulcer, erosion and polyp. Narrowed areas and stitches of the esophagus, stomach or duodenum are detected and treated. Objects struck in the esophagus or stomach can be detected and removed. Bleeding due to ulcers can be detected. Precancerous abnormalities such as Barrett esophagus is detected. Inflammation or swelling can be detected. Blockages esophageal reflex disease that is it is a digestive disease in which stomach acid or bile irritates food pipe it is detected during endoscopy for this biopsies are needed to diagnose this is and basic abnormalities that detected during endoscopy next we are going to see how to maintain an endoscope maintenance is very important for a medical equipment Pre-cleaning is important to clean priorly for the disinfection after the procedure done immediately. Wipe the endoscope using an approved enzymatic solution. Wash, suction, air and water channels according to the manufacturer's instruction. Always test the endoscope for leaks. Immerse in water and test. Thoroughly rinse the exterior of the endoscope using the clean water. Clean all channels with proper disinfectant. Use alcohol water mixture that is 70 to 80% to flush all, then swipe and wipe it and dry. Store the endoscope in a well ventilated container. Problems in endoscope The left hand holds the control section with the right hand controlling the insertion tip. Be aware of nicking the upper end of the umbilical cord. If it changes during bending, it would cause damage in the internal channel. The most proximal portion of the endoscope is the eyepiece. The generic replacement eyepiece commonly repairs by unauthorized repair firm in which they use low quality material so during the examination it may cause an undesirable view. Sometimes the shaft that is it contains all illumination components in the endoscope may get damaged. How to troubleshoot these problems? Correct positioning for each procedure results in the safest operation and endoscopy. The high quality standard authorized eyepiece is fitted according to the manufacturer's specification. Always use the endoscopes with proper guidance. This is about the troubles and troubleshoot these problems. Hope you can get some general information about endoscope so you can approach as through the healthcare engineering social media platform and also if you want more content regarding this article you can visit our blog if you want any specific topic to be learned you can mention it below the comment section kindly subscribe our channel and thank you so much for watching our video